Hey Delmarva, thanks for joining us today on Coast Life. We are your hosts, I'm Paige Marley. I'm Leah Rizzo, and hopefully you are staying indoors, yeah. off the roads, staying dry today, because we got uh, some ugly weather heading our way. Definitely, yeah. One of our coworkers was just telling us, maybe I'll wait till this all clears up to drive home from work. And we were like, it's, you're going to be here all night then. <laughs> yeah, grab your sleeping bag. Yep, hope you packed <laughs> light, brought your toothbrush. So yeah, be be careful getting on and off the roads today. Maybe don't go out if you don't need to. Yes, you and uh, well, luckily we've got you covered. Uh, first alert weather, maybe download the app so you can stay up to date, up to the minute of mm -hmm. all things weather related when we get into those kind of dangerous storm territory. Definitely, yeah. But uh, <laughs> we thought we'd start things off with sort of a goofy conversation, yeah. I guess. Maybe think about the um, impression that you give off and mm -hmm. why first impressions, while important, important aren't necessarily the only thing that matters. Um, yes. What's something that people maybe wrongly assume about you when they first meet you? You know, this one, this one touches a nerve a little bit, mm -hmm. Leah. This one gets me because you would think I'm like, oh, people think I'm so mean or people think I'm nice. No, this is what I always get and it makes me so mad. I always get, um, and this is maybe a six months to a year after knowing someone, mm -hmm. and maybe it's at work. This happens a lot of, actually for me at work. <laughs> um, they'll be like, oh, you know, I thought you were so nice, but actually, like, you can be a little mean sometimes. It's like, oh, because you took my stuff off my desk and I asked for it back? <laughs> oh, because, you know, it's like one, there's, there'll be one time when I'm not being mean, I'll just be, okay, hey guys, you know, we gotta do this, and they're like, I thought you were nice. That's so funny. You can See, be I've nice. worked with you for a little over a year now, yeah. and I feel like that you're just nice. Thanks. I would not say you've ever been mean. And Thank sometimes God. you're like, oh, I'm sorry, that was mean. And I'm like, no. Thank you. What I'm about to say is mean. <laughs> <laughs> See, you th I feel like you think you're mean, and I don't think you are either. What I like about you is you get stuff done, but it's not mean. Yes, and I think sometimes that is the attitude that, like, if that's the first read you mm -hmm. have of me, a lot of people think that I was, like, straight A student, hard studier, mm -hmm. like always got things done in time. I was a C's get degrees kind of girl. That's like okay. I was not, I didn't know how to study for a very long time. Like I didn't know my learning style. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why I was so bad at multiple choice tests. Like I get imposter syndrome so bad. And I feel like people are always so surprised when I'm like, I never feel like I'm where I should be. Mm -hmm. No, that's okay. I think a lot of people experience that. Something that else that just, it, this happens to me a lot too is, I think when I first meet someone, I tend to tr be like, I'm very, I'll be myself, right? I'm very mm -hmm. silly for the most part. I'll make jokes, whatever. And I, sometimes I think certain demographics will take me as being dumb or ditzy. Interesting. And I get that a lot where they'll be like, oh, you must not have known that. And I, I it's something I've noticed throughout time where I'm like, do you think, think I'm dumb this whole time because I'm loud, because I joke, mm -hmm. because I will tell you that maybe the dumb thing I did do. You know? Right, sure. We like, yeah. and, and I think, you know, you and I are, are entertainers in yeah. a sense. And so, you know, we know and, and we know when to be silly and, and when to share the stupid things that we did because mm -hmm. we're like, hey, this is going to make you laugh. We know right. that you're going to find this funny or relatable it's because relatable, like right. we all do stupid things sometimes. Yes. Um, I also feel like one that I get, and I hope that this isn't true, I like to think it's a wrong assumption about me is that sometimes people are like, I thought you were kind of stuck up or like, oh, you know, no. like, whoa, no, I'm like, I'm the first one to You are the least go. stuck up person. <laughs> I hope so. But. You are the least stuck up person. Yeah, no. If you think that about Leah, you're wrong. <laughs> I can confirm that. So, yeah. Think about that question for yourself yeah. a little bit. Do a little uh, in introspection. I think so. I think that's the right and word. And I think we can all do a better job of not, you know, meeting someone for the first time, especially if it's in a stressful situation, not judging their whole personality off that. Yes. Uh, as you can see, I feel a little fired up today. We do get a little fired up sometimes. Yeah, Although sometimes things. you make those assumptions and then you're like, no, 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 yeah. I'm not going to judge. And then a month to a month and a half later, it comes back around and you're like, actually, I was right about that person. Ooh, that doesn't happen to me often, but when it does, <laughs> right? it's Everyone's going to hear about it. It's satisfying. It's so satisfying. Um, I feel like we're on the kind of these deeper topics mm -hmm. today. We are. And what's funny is earlier, too, we were talking about therapies. We're going to jump into that, too. Um, <laughs> it started off as a funny question that we heard. It was like, hey, when did you realize you needed therapy? <laughs> right. And, you know, most of us are like, ha, ha, ha. We don't. And then you start talking, and it's like, so you want to go to carpool to the Like, therapist? wait, actually, maybe. Right. Everybody could use, first of all, everybody could use a little That's bit of therapy. That's not a joke. Like, it's not a joke. Yeah. Therapy is beneficial to anybody. Yes. It's nice just to have somebody that can talk to that won't judge you for mm -hmm. the things you're about to say. <laughs> yes. But was there a time when maybe, we'll get open with the conversation, and we're not getting, like, too deep here, but we'll get open with it, of, like, hey, when, you know, when did you realize maybe therapy is for everybody? Because I feel like I just started thinking that this year where I'm like, why not? It's, yeah. It, it could be, it could be um, what's the word when you're trying to prevent something? 
It could be preventative. <laughs> it could be preventative. I'm Precaution, <laughs> precautions. <laughs> Sometimes people think I'm dumb. <laughs> No, I'm not dumb. I'm just forgetful. Okay. <laughs> we all forget our words sometimes, Thank you, you know. <laughs> Anyways, therapy could be preventative. <laughs> and uh, I just think, too, like you, as you get older, you're like, wow, that happened back in my life. And, and I could talk to someone about it. Well, yeah. And you mentioned that, like, you know, sometimes you look back and you're like, was that trauma? Like, was that childhood trauma? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I grew up in a very loving and safe environment. Yeah. We always had food on the table. We always, like, we always felt loved. Yeah. But I do realize that, like, sometimes I'll hear people on the phone with their siblings, and when they end the phone call, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, love you, bye. And I'm like, I, I love my siblings, but I don't know how often I tell them that. Like, yeah. it almost never happens. Like, I could guarantee you if I texted my brother right now and I was like, hey, love you, he'd be like, are you Okay, What's like is something wrong? Someone take your phone? <laughs> right. That's so fun. I think that's where you and I were talking. We differ is growing up in my family, it was very, very mm -hmm. like, my, you know, cuddling and love yous. And mm -hmm. I'm still like that with my family, very like touchy feely in a way. Um, but it did almost, and I'm not going to say this is because of the way I grew up, but it could be. I don't, I'm just not trying to push blame on no, people. I don't know. <laughs> right. This is why we need therapy. But here we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is a little bit opposite where now it's like I find myself a lot having trouble sharing negative feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good at telling people I love them and all that, but the negative is, is where I struggle. So yeah. if you're struggling, and but let's talk about it too. I mean, <laughs> the winter blues are coming, right? Ugh. Don't They're, remind me. That happens to the best of us. Uh, sometimes I don't even realize I had them until the sun comes out in March. And I'm like, yeah. That was rough. So right, that fr oh, that first feeling of mm -hmm. like you step outside and it's mm -hmm. like sixty-five degrees, yes. and you're like, I don't need this jacket, and like the sun hits your mm -hmm. face, and you're like, this is it. This is happy. Yes, I'm gonna get a lot done today. <laughs> yes. I'm a happy person. Yeah, but so. yeah, I I don't know. Like, and I think maybe even like the imposter syndrome that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. where like I always feel like I'm a little bit behind, or I'm a little like, oh, I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. and I don't know why. Well, I think you're good enough. I think you're good enough, too. So hopefully, you know, this was more of a relatable conversation than we normally go to, but hopefully you could relate yeah. to it. And let us know, too. If I mean, we want to keep it light at the same time. But true, I would love to hear your thoughts. Like, did you hit your 20s, 30s, and you're like, maybe therapy is a good idea? <laughs> Well, I think there's also sort of the 20s and you mentioned 20s and 30s, and I think you know there's there's expectation and there's mm -hmm. reality. And mm -hmm. I think for a lot of us, the expectation of your 20s, you know, was friends, was yep. new girl, and you're like living or uh, you're living this luxurious 20-something life. You're making friends yeah. and meeting people and partying, and then the reality is, you're like, I'm on my couch watching TV, yep. eating some snacks, and you're not meeting people the way that, like, you thought you were going to. Mm -hmm. And if that's you, that's okay. That's okay. I no, love that's that. totally okay. And, and, yeah. and it's okay to love that. Oh, yeah. How many people did we talk to when we've guessed and we're like, what would you do for New Year's? Nothing. Mm -hmm. That was all of us. And we're all also like, honestly, that's awesome. <laughs> Being a grandma is in, baby, yes. it is. And then you kind of hit your 30s and you're like, wow, 20s were just a trial run, huh? <laughs> you know what else I'm curious to ask them about? What were their first impressions of us? Mm -hmm. When we like like go back to like May last year and we first oh, came man. on our television screen, because someone who we work with was like, "Oh, you like you're Prissy Page," and at first I'm like, "That's not me." Then they explained it and it kind of made sense. I don't think I'm that <laughs> Prissy though. I don't think so. But either. I would love to know what you guys think, yeah, of, us. think of us, even mm -hmm. if it's mean, but just not that okay. mean. You don't have to hurt our feelings too bad today. Yeah, <laughs> just keep it base level. Yeah. Oh hey, wait! Did you guys notice? Hey. That's right. We dove right into all the deep stuff. We forgot to mention that our set is all different. Yes. Rewind. <laughs> Look at this. And this is but this is bad. So so um, Lord's Landscaping yes. who, uh, did this for us. They are the best in Millville. But I have this bad habit now where I'm... I know, because they give us these really yeah. cute, not only cute, but very comfortable pillows. So I'm just going to... I think what the one thing I really love that they did with all of this, and we'll talk about this a yeah. little bit later, um, but they, they kind of kept the red from the holiday, and we just kind of reoriented it towards Valentine's Day. So if you're not totally ready to be done with Christmas yet, that's okay. Yeah. You can just kind of sprinkle in a few different colors, the golds, mm -hmm. um, a couple other things to make yeah. it feel less holidays, a exactly. little more loving. And if you want to be comfortable on your couch like this, uh, or get anything here, you can. It's all yes. at Lord's. That's right. It's all Millville. for sale. Yep. Amazing. All these things, look, we're not touching these. They have the price tags on mm -hmm. them. Everything up here, these cool pillows. Um, you can't even see, there's like cool bags on the top here as well. Look, so just go into Lord's. Yes, go in. You're shopping. definitely going to find something yes. you love there for sure. But yes. we know you're going to love this episode of Coast Life that's headed your way. Our field correspondent, Maya Henry, is going to tell us what's coming up on the show. Coming up today on Coast Life, are you getting tired of your average breakfast options? Maya Henry is taking you to Ocean City to satisfy all your morning cravings. And looking for some new tunes to add to your playlist? We're bringing you new music from a local rock band. 
Plus, searching for new ways to keep the little ones entertained? Don't go anywhere because we have a challenge that you don't want to miss. All that and more when Coast Life gets back. Coast Life is brought to you by BB Healthcare, Coastal Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, Preston Automotive Group, Shell Brothers, and the Parker Group. Coast Life, before the break, we were diving a, a little deep into our psyche here. You got to you got to know Paige and Leah a little bit on a um, slightly deeper level <laughs> than maybe we were all comfortable with. But hey, that's all right. It's nice to know that you're not alone, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> but we had also touched on our set looking a little different than maybe the last time you saw it. We're sticking with the winter reds. Mm -hmm. I especially love it because January's birthstone is that like um, garnet. It's that kind of reddish color. Someone here has a birthday in January. Somebody has a January Maybe birthday. next week. Maybe it's somebody here in the studio. <laughs> Maybe so. So yeah, I think you're feeling this then. But yes, I'm yeah. really feeling this vibe. Mm -hmm. And everything that's in the studio is from Lord's Mercantile. We love these little, our, our new pillows obsessed. that we are. I mean, we're always obsessed with everything that they do. Uh, but we're going to... It's, let's just see them kind of set it up because yeah. the, normally we've had a different crew come in and they come super planned, but we had Amy this time and she just like, she can see it as she goes. It's amazing to watch her work. Her so, vision's incredible. Let's uh, take a look at that vision. They always do such an amazing job. Yeah. And one of my other favorite things about going to Lord's Mercantile, I mean, A, you know you're going to find something that you oh, fall yeah. head over heels in love with that you won't be able to stop thinking about, yeah. and then you're going to be mad you didn't buy it. Yep. But they also support some local artists as well. They're, we've got some stuff in here from Happy Camper. Yes. Um, I'm sure you've seen some of their designs before, uh, like this, the, the Delaware State Parks vehicle, yep. the surf tag ones. Yeah, I'm going to move this. I'm looking at the monitor, sorry. The, <laughs> the 19930. <laughs> so cute. Um, I'm sure you've come across some of their work, mm -hmm. and they are supplying, they've got a whole wall in Lord's Mercantile right now, yeah. full of all of the, the signage that they make at yeah. Happy Camper. You're just supporting local businesses all over the place, which you know we love because look at our new pillows. Yes. Local. Hey. Exactly. <laughs> and I would love to when people come in, when we have guests in, and they're like, oh, where can I buy this? Where can I buy this? And I just love it. And it's easy. Everything. Lord Mercantile. It's right. Where else would you go? But coming up next on Coast Life, if you are trying to get your kids outside and reading, we've got the challenge for you. So stay right there. Coast Life, this may be a familiar face mm -hmm. to you. Perhaps you grew up watching a little bit of TV and you would hear, only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey Bear, it's him. Here he is. He's here with us. <laughs> and he's got a challenge for you. Maybe you want to get yourself, your kids outside more this year and reading yes. things we love here on Coast Life. So joining us on the couch today is Ashley Melvin. Welcome, Ashley. Good morning to both of you. Thank you yes, for being how here. How are you? I'm wonderful. Good. But I get to do things like this every day, so yes. I might be biased. Well, oh we gosh. are excited to have you. So tell us about Smokey and his challenge, the, the reading challenge that's going on for kids. I mean, this is going on everywhere, but Correct. we've got opportunities for local kids yeah. to uh, partake in this challenge. Well put. So Smokey Bear turns 80 years old this wow. year. He looks great. August 9th, I think he looks <laughs> Very well himself. 80. Yeah, very good. And so he turns 80 years old. And so the U.S. Forest Service has developed a reading challenge that's being rolled out all over the nation where families can go to their local libraries and participate in the challenge, read different environmentally focused books. And there are a few uh, activities on the back. Maybe we'll talk about those in just yes. a bit. Yes. But here in Delaware, we have 33 public libraries. And so we decided to form a partnership with them, the Delaware Forest Service so that we could really help to promote the challenge. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the next year, this year, we are going to visit each of those libraries. We're making a, a very nice donation of books mm -hmm. and even some smoky swag. Ooh. Yeah, right? Some things that when the kids come in and they're interested in participating that they can get and then a very special prize should they complete the challenge and bring that back to the library. Ah. Incredible. Yeah. This is really exciting. So you have some of these books here yes. with us today. Can you take us through the kinds of books you're encouraging kids to read? Certainly. So they, this is not an inclusive list, sure. right? So anything having to do with the environment or being outside would definitely count towards the challenge. Perfect. But what we wanted to outfit each of the libraries with, kind of trying to span that, that literacy umbrella. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we have 
Smoky Story, which could be a great um, kind here. of a history, social yeah. studies uh, book. We brought uh, a non-fiction um, book, right? Mm -hmm. The Hike, very popular book mm -hmm. about just being outside and being outdoors. And then some career-oriented books, because we want people to know that there are very rewarding careers in natural resources. I happen to be one of those mm -hmm. people. Yes. Um, we also are donating some nonfiction books, which mm -hmm. I am very biased towards. That, <laughs> that's, that's my section of the library. I love to learn about nature. I love to learn the names of things that mm -hmm. you might find in nature. And so we wanted also the children and families in Delaware to have that same opportunity. Awesome. Yeah, that's I know incredible. one of these was this one that you were really oh, excited yes, about. Quite Delaware proud. trees. <laughs> we're quite proud of that. And we feel that it would be very fitting for each of the libraries to have a copy of that. Yes. Okay. And Tell I think, us about it. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize how many species of trees there are out there. They don't. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and so that's a, a, another great lesson, another great connection with trees and other green things outside is that things grow in particular areas and so they're known as natives. Mm -hmm. And so in Delaware, we have close to 100 native trees wow. in Delaware, which when you think of how small mm -hmm. our state is, mm -hmm. that's quite an extensive list of native species. And so one of the great ways to connect people to a natural resource, this collection of books has many other outlets far beyond the, the Smoky Bear Reading Challenge. I feel like, I know we're not kids, but I feel like we should be participating in this reading yes. challenge. I'll, I want to learn. I'll leave that log here <laughs> for my, you guys. Leah's going to have <laughs> Maddie. Paige. I'm going to be like, Paige, let's go. <laughs> She's my like, <laughs> like, we're going on a hike. <laughs> She's my environment warrior. Let's do it. I need yes. to get them learning and I need to get them reading. Yes. What's the first step? What should they do to get them on I would suggest going to your local library. Mm -hmm. We really are here to promote families connecting with their local libraries mm -hmm. and nature education education and wildfire prevention, mm -hmm. those are local initiatives. And so it really does make sense that it's happening at the library. Yeah. So I would say step number one, you can go onto the library website, the State of Delaware Library website, and they have a really beautiful map mm -hmm. of where all 33 of those libraries are. So step one, go to your library. They're set up with everything they need to do to help families participate. Mm -hmm. And step number two, could always be, you know, contact somebody from the Delaware Forest Service. Right. We love talking about trees, as you can tell, <laughs> and we love talking about our state, as you can tell. And so we're just really here to help people make those connections. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for coming in and sharing all of this. Yes. I know a lot of kids are going to be excited to I dive into so. reading, yeah. and I know a lot of parents are going to be excited to encourage their kids to get outside right. this year. Yes. yes. And Maybe thank you, Smokey. Guys. Thank you, Smokey. <laughs> you guys are so fun. Thanks for being here. <laughs> thank you very much, ladies. Speaking of reading, though, a few months ago, we introduced you to Delmar. Marvelous Dawn and OC Buddy. They've got a new book coming out. We're going to check in with them when Coast Life gets back. Does this book look a little familiar to you? Yes, I think it does. does it? Maybe the little pup on the front? Yeah, <laughs> a couple months ago. <laughs> Maybe so. If you don't remember, this is The Adventures of O.C. Buddy and Skippy the Squirrel. Yes. And we had the honor of having O.C. Buddy on the show with his wonderful owner, or mom, I should say, yeah. Del Marvelous Don. And they're back today to keep us updated on what they're up to. We have Don Butler and O.C. Buddy in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having us back. Of we course. We're happy to be here. We're yes. happy to have you. I don't know if you can see Buddy right now. He decided to lay down. <laughs> you can see just the top of his head. I'm sure he'll stand up in just a minute here. But um, Top of his head, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> but Don, you gave us this book last time we were here, this adorable children's book filled with pictures of Buddy, and it really took off. What have you been up to since this book? Well, um, I People wanted another book, mm -hmm. and that really, I felt like I had achieved my goal of mm -hmm. writing a children's book. But they said, are you going to do another one? And I said, right, well, well if you buy them, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, and it was interesting because just like Skippy came out of a bush, um, in back of our condos is a, a two-story home, and these seagulls were up there one day. Mm. And as I was walking him, the one came down like he was going to nosedive on us. And I figured out they had a nest up there. Oh. So I started researching seagulls. So then that's where Sammy the seagull mm -hmm. came in. And we wrote the second book. And we have a third book in the works, um, Freddie the Fox. And I have a young artist friend, 
uh, writer, young writer, nine years old, Zara from West Virginia, who's going to collaborate with me on that. Oh, wow, that was so cool! We love that you, you know, uh, talk to your fans, and they can they get incorporated exactly. into the stories, and yeah. then we can even show off a little bit of Zara's work here. Yes. yes. So you said she's nine. She's nine and years. She was a fan of you guys. Yes, oh. she's been following us, and her grandmother and uh, her mom and her came for a uh, vacation mm -hmm. in Ocean City this summer and I got the opportunity to meet her, not mm -hmm. just on a flat screen, you know, a name and a yeah. face. We got to meet in person. Wow. So. That's, That's awesome. crazy. Yeah, so the second book then. So this is Sammy so yeah, the Seagull. Sammy the Seagull. So fun. Tell us about this book and what's different between we, the Skippy the Squirrel and Sammy the Seagull. Sammy the Seagull was a little bit more challenging yeah. because uh, it wasn't like Skippy down, you know, around. And, but it also made me, as I researched, I started uh, noticing patterns and stuff. So, um, so it became informational, informative. So that's one thing that, that adults say, I love the way you wrote and yeah. researched. And so it appeals to, you know, the pictures and the, that we kind of go aim for the children, yeah. and, you know, readers. And, but yet we have something there that is of interest to people of all ages. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like we said, you incorporate a lot from your fans and, right. and locals alike. And yes. so as you can see, Will made this for me, a gentleman. He Sorry. and his wife are lovely people. And I was had broken my shoulder last year. And so he painted that just to lift my spirits. Yeah. And that's the type of fans that OC Buddy and Del Mollo has done. Our, our fan base is growing, yes. uh, since, especially since we were here last time. Great. And people are saying, and they wanted a calendar mm, even. That's so right. We Show this off too. Love this. That was there he is. You know, <laughs> like a little Van Gogh moment. Right. And then on the back, there's the different pictures that we'll follow Aww. for each month. <laughs> so that's what we've been busy doing. Yes, so. and you guys have this big fan base. Do you have a book signing coming up? Is my understanding for we fans do. who maybe want to come meet you? Uh, that yeah, Buddy and I will be there at Fast Eddie's, and Fa Eddie Johnson has been uh, uh, such an encouragement and. Um, friend and uh, businessman to me and giving me little pointers and he ha is graciously letting us come there this Thursday okay. uh, at from 4 to 6 p.m. to have our, our official book signing. Oh my so gosh. Can they buy books while they're there? Absolutely. Great. It's, yeah, 1995 uh, and the calendar's 1295. If anyone doesn't have the first book, um, uh, Skippy the Squirrel, I've got that to 1095. That's awesome. and we can do a bundle even. There you go. So a lot of options. Perfect. Great. Yes. Well, I know they'll be excited. Will Buddy be at Fast Eddie's? He will be okay. there. Yay. Good, good. Yes, That's a big you. selling point, of course. Yes, I mean I know I'm chopped liver. He's he's <laughs> yes. just, he's the star of the show. <laughs> you Aww. are not you are Del Marvelous Star. <laughs> oh well thank you. <laughs> sell yourself short. <laughs> thank you so much. Of course, Don, thank you for being here. Thank you for keeping us updated. I know a lot of Buddy fans are gonna be excited to get their hands on some merch. Um, I know a lot of fans too are watching who are fans of the Fitzky Brothers. That's right. Some good news for you, <laughs> they are coming up next, so you don't wanna miss that. Coast Life, you know that Delmarva has uh, got quite the music scene going yeah. on these days, and part of that music scene starts rather young. We've introduced you to the Fitzky brothers before. They are joining us on the Coast Life couch now. Drew and Alex Fitzky, welcome guys. Hi, thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you so much for coming in. I hear you guys had a very busy summer. Yes, we've been playing a lot uh, up and down the East Coast mm -hmm. with our band with Melody Trucks. Yes. Having fun, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so last time we talked, you guys were gearing up for that tour. Uh, did it meet the, the expectations that you had? Oh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, playing with Melody is great, mm -hmm. uh, holding up the legacy of the Allman Brothers Band and mm -hmm. uh, getting into that scene is always fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. We were talking just before we got started. I'm like, because we, we met them separately. Mm -hmm. Leah and I have never, we have never all been together. That's like, right. We <laughs> are on the couch today. So the last I saw you was that rally for first responders. Mm -hmm. uh, that was at Hudson Fields. You guys were talking like, oh, yeah, yeah we just played guitar with like Post Malone the other day. <laughs> right. And it's like, yeah. wait, just throw that in there. Yeah. So I'm just curious, like, what is the life of a young rock star right now? What's it looking like? Oh, well, it's a lot of school makeup work. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is so honest. True, yeah. true. I love that. Yeah. It Important is. though. Uh, I know you guys are also getting ready to make some new music as well. Mm -hmm. uh, same similar sound. Are you guys trying anything new? When can people look forward to, to hearing this new music? It's a little more. I'd say it's a little more jammier than uh, mm -hmm. the other uh, song we put out. Uh, Give you all my love, which was in October. Mm -hmm. It's 
doing pretty well. It's got like I think on Spotify around twenty five yeah, thousand well, streams. Yes. It's wow. Doing, yep. It's doing nice. good. But this uh, new one is, uh, I think it's around March first is when it's gonna come out. Okay. It's a little jam here. It's called Lake Song, and yeah, I'm proud of it. So perfect. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> How can we hear it? Can we listen to it on all yeah. streaming platforms? It's be yes. Okay. Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you get your music, that's okay. where you can find it. Perfect. I've been Definitely dying to ask you guys this question. So you guys, do you write your own music? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have to know. Okay, so your brothers, obviously they look the same, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have the same last name. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know the, the real life. Give us the details. What is it like working with your brother? Do you ever like, that lyric stinks, <laughs> no, it rocks. <laughs> or is it just good all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Their dad is laughing in the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's the easy answer? So, <laughs> the way that it usually works is he, he works on songs in his head. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't actually play any melodic instruments, so I'm the one that has to make them into uh, like Tunes. real songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can play on yeah. instruments. So yeah. he he like <laughs> sings me a part or whatever, and I have to if it's like in between keys, then I have to mm -hmm. put it in a certain key, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah. That's difficult. Cool. I mean, in it's some real, ways, it's yes. probably nice that it's your brother because yes. you can kind of get away with being maybe a little bit more uh, aggressive in yeah. your corrections mm -hmm. yep. and your siblings, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yes. The thing I love about you guys, though, is every time that we meet you guys or see you out, I, it is a family affair. Your dad's there, you know, the rest of your family's a, a big support. So does that kind of help you, I don't want to say stay grounded, but it seems like it is kind of helping you guys stay grounded. Mm -hmm. what, what's the best part of working with your family? Oh, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I love my parents. I'm incredibly grateful for all the work that they do. Um, they help us get on tours and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, most recently I went down to Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. um, Alex was playing New Year's up here with uh, another member of our family, Paul Cullen. Yes. Um, and I was going down there to play with a different member of our family, Melody Trucks, and my mom and I split up the driving 50-50. And mm. like, we just hung out and nice. stayed up. Late awesome. every night. It was very great. easy because we're all in physically in the same room. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's like communicating when gigs are, what's things that are happening. Mm -hmm. You just go upstairs to sure. our room. Convenient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's a good Awesome. Point. Well, we know you guys have new music coming out. Are you mm -hmm. going on tour anytime soon, mm -hmm. or can people still catch you locally around the beach to the summer? Um, I think most recently we're going to, uh, or closest coming yeah. up. <laughs> uh, March 13th through the 16th, we're headed down to Austin, Texas again. Nice. We're going to be part of the South by Southwest Festival, fun. which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, January 25th starts our tour in Florida with Melody. We're going to be playing with Melody, uh, Jackson Stokes, and Tony Tyler. Oh my uh, gosh. In Boca Raton, Sarasota, uh, okay. Gainesville, okay. and Tampa. Yeah. Nice. It's oh going to be gosh. fun. Yeah. Well, when you're traveling, don't forget about us here on yes, Marva. Right? Won't. <laughs> Please come yeah. back to the Coast Life anytime, especially when you win your first, I don't know, Grammy? Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> just hit us up. Let us know. Send us a selfie. That'd be great. Well, thank you for coming and making the time. I know you guys are busy, but it means a lot to, to be here and uh, up, yeah, update us once you guys are doing it. Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, good luck awesome. with everything. March 1st, Apple Music, Spotify. I have no idea where else you get music. There's All only, the places. Only two I know. But <laughs> wherever you get music, make sure you download the Fitzky Brothers tunes. Uh, coming up, though, in just a little bit, we have a. <laughs> I was going to try to say something about a dinosaur, but I don't know any dinosaur terms. Dinosaurs, people, buses, destruction. That's oh my. Fun. Yep. <laughs> Let's come to Coast Life when we get back. Coast Life, you've probably heard that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It is. Paige, do you have a favorite thing to eat for breakfast? Everything. Lattes, <laughs> coffee. I normally end it with that, but I know I should add it with my favorites. Pancakes and strawberries. Mm -hmm. Crepes with strawberries. Oh, crepes. Uh, what else? Anything with strawberry. Oatmeal with strawberries. Mm. Strawberries aren't even my favorite fruit. <laughs> this is just my breakfast <laughs> option. Well, there's so many breakfast options mm -hmm. that you can find at Bayside Skillet in Ocean City. Our field correspondent, Maya Henry, is taking us there mm -hmm. to uh, see all the delicious things that they have on the menu. As far as Sydney Swigbaum can remember, the Bayside Skillet in Ocean City has always been his second home. It's pretty much my parents being here every day, like my whole life, like 
My mom's the person at the front normally when everyone walks in. My dad's the guy squeezing the orange juice. Sydney's parents, Peter and Rebecca, opened the Bayside Skillet in 1977. And as you can imagine, Sydney spent plenty of time there through the years, rolling silverware and helping out wherever there was a need. After a brief stint exploring other career options, Sydney came home and reignited his passion in the business that his parents created. But I think when you see that your whole life, um, you realize what they put into it and you realize you can't, you don't want to let them down, I think is, is the big thing. You don't want to see what they've done their whole life and then let it go uh, off on a different path. So Sydney's now spending his days pouring all the time he has into the place and its phenomenal food. Home to outstanding omelets, an assortment of creative crepes, and a plethora of potato options, the Bayside Skillet is known for all things breakfast. And we cannot forget about the strawberry blitz omelet. So for right now, I see some strawberries. We have some powder on top. So let's go ahead and dig in. Oh, wow. And then we have some strawberries in the middle. This looks fantastic. All right. It's very, very hot. Thank you. Don't forget to talk about breakfast. Yeah. It's sweet. It's really powdery. But I can see why this is one of their top favorites. This is amazing. And at the Bayside Skillet, you'll never have to worry about processed or prepackaged meals. You know, everything's fresh, everything's homemade, um, everything's made to order. So we, we just think uh, we're doing it better than, than, than most. You can't have breakfast without a glass of your favorite drink to wash it all down. Freshly squeezed orange juice and lemonades, they're all available. You can also visit the juice bar for a more zesty flavor to bring some excitement to your morning. A whole full bar out there. We use all of our freshly squeezed juices in mimosas, crushes. When you enter the Bayside Skillet, you'll immediately be drawn into the decor. Think pink. You may even meet a new buddy. Uh, I mean, we've always been pet friendly. Obviously, in the summertime, people can bring dogs or whatever outside. Uh, but now um, it's become such a thing for people to travel with their pets. I know more and more hotels and motels in Ocean City are pet friendly. And if you're a fan of eating outdoors, this is the place to be when the weather is warm and even when it's not. And then we got one heater, then we got two heaters. Now we have eight different heaters that are all individually so they can you know, some person's hot, some person's cold, they can flick on their own heater. Though you won't find pancakes on the menu, the Bayside Skillet has a treat that won't only catch your eye, but satisfy your cravings, one bite at a time. A crepe is a very thin pancake. It's everything that's in a pancake, except for the baking soda, so it doesn't rise. Those who love a topping to spruce up their meal, Sydney has a whip alternative to add the perfect sweetness. So we have this homemade whipped cream, it's called Chantilly, it's powdered sugar uh, and vanilla extract and heavy whipping cream. Not a lot of places make their own whipped cream, but it is awesome. To make sure the Chantilly is stirred to perfection, the Bayside Skillet has a test that defies the laws of gravity. All right, we're gonna see if I whip this correctly. Would you wanna bit, take yeah. that? I'm scared. Oh, we did it right! Yeah. <laughs> the restaurant offers more than 100 bachelorette brunches and plenty of seats for all your bridemaid besties. We yeah, um, normally have a little gift with a chocolate banana for the bride if they want that. Um, it's very popular, usually everyone in the group screams. Located on 77th Street and Coastal Highway of Ocean City, the Bayside Skillet is open every day on a mission to add some delight to the most important part of the day. Paige, how amazing does everything look at Bayside Skillet in Ocean City? Oh my, I just told you, I think I, I need to make pancakes for dinner now. Yes. Or crepes. Yep, because we're craving them now. Yes. And uh, the worst part is, though, is like, I can just never make them as good. No, never. We and so like, we can try it home, and then you're like, oh, it's just not the same. Yeah. Uh, but they also do mimosas. Starting as early as 9 a.m. Not early enough, just kidding. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, but we also saw that they do bachelorette parties. How yes. fun would that be? Like a little brunch bachelorette party with crepes. Fun. And the pink, the aesthetic, the whole thing is just perfect. So highly recommend going there just for a girly breakfast, That's brunch, right. or with your <laughs> girls for your bachelor party. Have fun. Love that. Lots to love in Ocean City. But we've also got a little bit more Coast Life headed your way, so don't go anywhere. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Ocean City Tourism.
Leah, imagine this. Mm -hmm. You ride around in a big hot dog all day, <laughs> but you get paid for it. Hey, why not? I already drive a big stupid car. I feel <laughs> like I'm just one step away from being the Oscar Mayer Wiener driver. You could be. I kind of want to. They're looking for drivers. They're called hot doggers. <laughs> I, I, feel, I was born for this role. They're called hot doggers, and they drive the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile, and they get paid to just drive it, and they have a companion always, so mm -hmm. that's nice. And they go to like 20 at least different states and just take this to different events. I, in another life somewhere, mm -hmm. like this, my dream job would be doing all of those like one year yeah. silly jobs where like you're the Oscar Mayer Wiener driver or you watch Gilmore Girls for a year and you get paid like, you know, little increments amount mm -hmm. of money, but you get to experience the perks yes. and like travel for a little while. Like, yes, I want to travel the States in the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. It sounds honestly incredible. Get this, so you're driving it. You go to go, they pay for your hotels. Mm -hmm. So your, your expense, expense is paid for there. Um, continental breakfast, who doesn't love that? But then also you get paid like 35,000 about a year. It doesn't sound like too much, but sock that away, baby, because you're also getting a weekly allowance for your food and yeah. your spending money. But I feel like I would want to do like every single one of them, document them yeah. and make that like a another show within itself. 100%. And I feel like that would be very, very fun. We could yeah. call it like you know, gimmick. Yeah, <laughs> and it's apparently you get like 18 something paid days off. So fine. And Not then bad. Uh, health benefits. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I know, it doesn't sound that bad. So let's apply. Hot dogs and being a hot dogger, <laughs> apply. But please stop by the Coast Life Studio if you become a hot dogger and drive the Wienermobile. We want to see Oh, it. yes. Please keep us up to date on everything. But uh, before we get out of here, one more reminder that weather is going to turn yes. ugly tonight, tomorrow. So just be careful out there. Be safe. I know a lot of schools are closed tomorrow, I think. I know mm -hmm. they were closing early today. Yeah. So just kind of kinda TBD tomorrow. TBD tomorrow. Yeah. Keep an eye on that. We'll keep you up to date with, um, uh, of course, all of our meteorologists, our first alert weather. You can download that app again just to, to stay close.